I think this is something worth mentioning. I just mentioned it to some facilitators that I'm working with. We were talking here in this work about repression, but also just triggers generally. So being angry with someone, being in an argument, a conflict with someone. People have different ways of responding to conflict or adversity. Some of us are more overt with our anger. Whereas I used to be a repressor, I'm more of an expressor now. Um, not always in anger, but sometimes. So it, it seems to be whether you're expressing it, if you're someone who can express it, or if you're someone who shuts down. Um, think about this as an inquiry or as a, as a pathway to go into. What I notice about both states, like when I'm expressing anger, um, it's good because I'm not repressing it, but there's often... I can see and have seen that there's this assumption underneath that, that that person is responsible for my pain. And then as long as I believe that, then I'm going to keep coming at the person. See, like if I can get you to agree with me or change your mind about this, or if you'll calm down, I'll calm down, giving our power away completely to someone else when there's overt anger, first of all, overt argument, conflict, that nothing is hidden. It's all being said or most of it's being said, there's still often a demand, like, you're responsible for my feeling here. Fix it. You can go into inquiry, in that, even in that overt state, just stop and say, she's not responsible to fix my feeling. I'm responsible. And then watch the objection. For some of the clients that I've been doing this with, and I remember doing it myself when I first discovered it, there's like a tantrum that shows up. It's like a, it's like I'm making a demand on you. You need to fix my feeling. And it's like a tantrum. The demand is like a tantrum. Um, not for everybody, but in any event, just look at it and see how it shows up for you. So in the overt anger, just coming back, I'm responsible for this feeling. They're not responsible to fix it and watching what comes up, allowing it all. But then the other part of this is even if you're not someone who's, you're not to the place where you can express something, your forthrightness, your viewpoint, your feeling, if you're not able to and you're still shutting down in the face of conflict, notice what happens in the shutdown state. Similar assumption is operating. The argument has gone underground, so the argument at that point is probably just in your consciousness. You're not expressing it. But notice a lot of times you're still arguing with the person in your head if you're conscious of that, but you might be shut down and disconnected from an actual relating with the person. You might be believing a deficiency story or whatever else in that moment. But notice that it can be the same basic assumption operating. This I'm assuming that this person is going to do or say something that's going to fix my pain. So even if you're in a shutdown state, not expressing it overtly, you can reverse that belief and just say, She's not responsible for fixing my feelings. I am fully responsible. And the same kind of objection can arise, or similar as if you were expressing it outwardly. This seems really important when it comes to owning our own suffering and not shadowing that out, not blaming other people for our pain. <laughs> and clarity, to be able to see this if it's operating in you. Yeah, I just thought I would share that because those states of shutdown are confusing for people because when they're shut down, they might even deny that they're angry if they're really repressing it. There might be a self-denial of that. And then in that unconsciousness, you might not even be aware of this other thing, this demand that the other person fix the feeling. So making this conscious is what reverse inquiry does, whether you're expressing it overtly or covertly. They're not responsible for my pain. I am watch.